Hello, welcome to Virtual Exhibition 101. I'm Marina Munter, founder of GBTH. For those new to us, GBTH is a resident-based art incubator in Second Life, established at the end of 2017. Over the years, we facilitated more than 50 exhibitions, ranging from 2D displays to full environments, exploring the grid's artistic potential. Although Second Life may seem overwhelming initially, we embrace it as a creative platform shaped by people like you and me. With this video series, which draws from over six years of experimentation and learning, I'll share essential guidelines and methodologies we consider when organizing exhibitions in our spaces, so you can incorporate them in your own endeavors. Because we're a small team, and there are so many hours in a day, and days in a week, and weeks in a month, and months in a year, the decision to share this knowledge came from a place of genuine desire of seeing the community thriving and empowering other independent initiatives in the art field. We're thrilled to share insights that were once exclusive to individual artist consultations, now available to all, free of charge, thanks to the sponsors for this series. Bad Unicorn, Conch Island, Contraption, Deep Static, Fancy Decor, High Five, and Soy. You can find more about them in the video description. In this first out of four videos of the Virtual Exhibition 101 series, I'll be guiding you through a linear framework, and to kick off, we will talk about proportions and sizing, as well as image framing. So let's start with the key aspect here, proportions. Listen, we're not the first and definitely not the last to refer to this. Second Life, being a user-based platform, allows for a lot of freedom, from the size of your avatar to the manufacturing of objects such as furniture, buildings, and so on, and it tends to lean towards the oversized side of things. Have you ever noticed that whenever you do the core, for example, everything looks fine until your avatar gets close and suddenly what should be a standard-sized bottle of shampoo is actually bigger than your head? It is important to keep in mind that, first, Second Life does use numeric values that exist in the physical world, the metric system, so we do have references to compare. Second, I'm fully aware that it's to each their own, and especially in different groups and communities, there are tendencies to follow a certain standard for average sizing. That said, I'm covering here the thought process behind my decisions on sizing, so the methodology can be easily adapted for different cases, and yes, it's extremely relevant for exhibition displays. Stick with me and it will make sense. Regarding the oversized aspect, or what led it to propagate, one could argue that the culprit is the default camera angle. Let me show you what I mean. Our field of vision here is a bit awkward, because even if, I, even if my avatar is 6 feet tall, she feels minuscule on the screen. Also notice how clear the vision is in this area above her head, and how this building with a super high ceiling kind of makes sense with this camera angle, and that's not really a good thing. I'll create a wall to better illustrate my point, and then add a blueprint to simulate an artwork placement. So, in most cases, you see exhibition setups with artworks being displayed around this height in Second Life. Done so, the resident can walk around and view things more clearly, but if you get closer, it just feels odd. On Mao's look, you can see how the image distorts, and that's not ideal. The standard way of displaying images in real life suggests the work to be placed lower, and I'll get more in depth about this later in the video. For now, let's change your camera angle view. Open your camera controls or this little eye icon on your toolbar. If you don't see it there, right-click and select toolbar buttons. It's right up here, you just need to click and drag. This little window will pop on your screen, and then you click Position, which will open this other window, and that's the one we actually want. From there, there are three settings you change. The first is Camera Offset. The X value you change to minus 2.0, the Y will remain 0, and the Z will be minus 0.2. Then focus offset, the x will be 0 0.9, the y will remain 0, and the z will be 0 0.2. And lastly, camera offset scale, which we will increase to 1.5. You can see how the blue rectangle is no longer perfectly on frame, and how you can fully see the avatar on screen. That's the idea. I suggest saving as a preset just in case. Here, I named it New Rear Camera. In case it resets, you can access it here on this little camera on top of the screen. You can see how you can have a better view of your screen and look how far up and cropped that first screen we placed is. That's what we want. I kind of cheated for practical reasons and made my avatars hide what would be considered the average hide in Second Life. 
six feet tall. Okay, cool, but why is this relevant to art exhibition displays? I'm glad you asked. The short answer is the eye level. One of the coolest aspects of putting together display is that we have the opportunity to present a body of work in an immersive manner, so the relation between avatar and artwork is key. Here in Second Life, as I mentioned before, the height situation goes a bit all over the place, and that's fine. For this video, I created this database of actual avatars to show the height range in a practical way. The sample contains 30 adult human avatars. Their sizes range from 5 feet 4 or 165 centimeters to 7 feet 7 or 235 centimeters. You can see that even for the tallest ones, the blue rectangle is still placed super high. Now let's talk about the sizes of the artworks. It's a little bit more fancy than the freeforming that I did on the blue rectangle. When setting up a 2D exhibition, properly placing the artworks in their frames is vital. Right now, I'm going to share with you three ways I personally use to frame the works here in a cell to get them displayed perfectly. First, let's create a cube. You can either press Ctrl B on your keyboard or right click and select Create on the Pi menu. Then just click a surface and voila, a perfect 50 cm cube right in front of you. Even when we use mesh frames to display the final pieces, I always start with the images on frame because we can get the precise measurements and we can actually see the work all together to then select which frame will fit better for each case. We will be working with aspect ratio, pixel width and height, and meters. For the aspect ratio, we will just take the formula and apply it to the object measurements. I'll use these two posters as examples. First is 4x5. So the x that here is the width, we can change the value to 0.4, and since the z that represents the height is already 0.5, we can leave as this. The y we can just set to 0.01 for now. The 3x2 we follow the same steps. The x we change to 0.3, the z 0.2, and the y 0.01 for now. The pixel width and height we use when an image has been free cropped or when it's the easier info we have instead of the aspect ratio itself. For example, this image, part of Grant Waleska's primitive exhibit, is 2048 by 1280. I'll just decimate and use 2.048 on the width or x and 1.280 on the height or z. The y, again, we can keep as 0.01 for now. Meters are used mostly when we're dealing with artwork from the physical world. The example I picked is the Mona Lisa, which is 53 by 77 centimeters. So the x will be 0.53 and the z will be 0.77. This last example is also the only one I would keep this original size for the final display, once you have the exact measurements of the work in real life. Now it is when things get a bit tricky because it will be a user better judgment kind of situation, but also there's some logic behind it. For a quick reference, I size these 8 frames with the standard A in ISO 2 and 6 paper sizes using the metric system. The most known is probably the, probably the A4, this red one, which is the standard print paper sizes we, ha we use at home. At home in real life, I have some frames leaning on my desk and the A21 in green seems huge compared to the perspective I get here in SL. Remember the whole thing I mentioned about avatar height before? In real life, the standard for contemporary displays is to calculate the height of the center of the frames based on the eye view of the average height of the population in that specific location. For example, the average height of the country with the tallest people on Earth is the Netherlands, being 6 feet tall or 183 centimeters. The lowest is Timor Leste, with 5 feet 1, or 155 centimeters average. You can see how this number tends to vary even in real life. Since I made my avatar the alleged standard second life height, 6 feet, I'll guide you through the process to figure it out first, how to pick the height for the frames, and second, how to decide on the final size of the image. From here, first check that your bare feet without a shoe shape and else your hover height is set to zero. In the viewer, there are built-in poses that you can pick from the toolbar, so I'll just make my avatar stand straight. Now, we'll make a prim, 
such a phantom and bring it all the way up to the bottom end of the avatar's eyes. I'll copy the spring upwards and turn the Z into 0.01, which is the smallest size it can go. Then align stack pressing shift. For the sake of viewing, I'll turn its transparency to 50% and tint the top rim a different color. Let's link, clicking the base first and then the top to make it the root prim. Alternatively, you can also just stand straight near the wall, right-click edit the frame and move until the axis of the object is aligned to your avatar's eyes. Now you can rename the space and save for future use. I'll just call it I view reference. When you rest this object from your inventory, the fact that it has a base spring for the height, it will give you the precise number for the Z axis position, taking in consideration the floor of the space the artwork is in. To get this number, just edit linked and select the top prim, copying the coordinates on the object tab in the beauty menu. Now you know the height the artwork should be. To apply it, right-click Edit and paste the number you just copied into the Z value in the position settings. After you've done that, you can click Stretch both sides, which won't mess with the center of the frame, on the beauty menu and resize to your liking, seeing how it will look and the height it is supposed to be. Also, learning the method behind the calculation, you can adapt for any height you find fitting other than just taking what I decided to use as a standard, because even with the slight variations based on different avatar sizes, the frames are still much lower than how they're usually hung in Second Life. If you're displaying works from the physical world, I'd highly suggest keeping the actual size. The size difference, differences, especially when they're drastic, add so much to the whole immersive experience. In the case of a series of SL-based photography, you can select a variety of sizes or keep it all the same. I also highly suggest preparing the whole series on a platform naming each print frame accordingly and taking a copy to your inventory. It makes it easier when it comes to the time to actually set up the final exhibit. And that's a wrap for our first video. In the next one, I'll be covering everything you need to know about Lend and its settings to optimize your gallery experience, which can also be a game changer. See you then!